I'm Nancy Showalter, and you're listening to Spirituality for the Politically Incorrect podcast. Welcome, all radical paradigm shifters and creative change makers. You who dare to create a better life and a better world, tap into the power that resides within you and use that power for constructive change. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode, where we're going to talk about some challenging times that we're facing, both in the United States, but also around the world. And I want to give a broader perspective, a spiritual perspective on some of the issues that we're facing in America from the perspective of the Ascended Masters. And my special guest today is Alberta Fredrickson, who's the author of one CD and four books. And her passion is helping others. And I love the way she describes her life's work. She says it combines many years of professional experience and a spirituality that honors and looks beyond the outer crust into the precious spirit of every person. That is so beautiful. And Alberta's training, she has an incredible amount of training in human resource administrator, educator, public school side administrator, negotiator for labor and management. She's also a coach and a trainer, consultant, and a mediator. And I'd say the specialty is conflict management. Now, this is all in addition to her many years of studying and applying the teachings of the Ascended Master. So I'm so happy to have you here, Alberta. Welcome. Thank you so much, Nancy. It's a delight to be with you today. Before we start, Alberta, I want to do just a little bit of a summary for people uh, to talk about who the Ascended Masters are. And I'm only going to give a very brief thing. Basically, they're people like you and me who have reincarnated on this planet, and they have mastered time and space, balanced 51% of their karma and other things that are required, and they have reunited permanently with God within, the I Am Presence. Now, if you want to know more about Ascended Masters, You can go back to my August 11th, 2019, where I gave 10 miscellaneous things that limit who you are reaching your full potential. That's one. And then I have also talks on the Ascended Masters themselves. So you could get more information in that way. So these things come forward from Masters who are in the spiritual realm, again, who've mastered time and space, and who are reaching back to help us here on this planet. So before we get into the issues, though, I do want to review. I just finished a series on the seven major chakras, and this correlates to the seven major rays. And the rays are frequency of energy that vibrate at certain qualities of the Godhead. And those seven ray color frequencies are the throat chakra, which is blue frequency energy representing power, the crown, the yellow, representing wisdom, the heart, pink, representing love, and that is the focus of the threefold flame within our hearts. And then we have the base of the spine, which is white, light, and the purity, third eye green is healing, solar plexus, purple and gold service, and seat of the soul, violet freedom. So I bring this up because what we're gonna talk about today are some of the huge issues we have going on in our country regarding race. So I wanna once again, talk about race from the spiritual perspectives that the Ascended Masters teach, which I think you'll find a very interesting perspective. And Albert is here to help share with this perspective because some of her writings included. It's a great topic, Uh, Albert. The Masters talk about the I am race and not everybody's familiar with that concept. So maybe you could elaborate a little bit and tell people What is the I am race? Thank you, Nancy. It is one of those things, whenever you speak those words and the word race gets mentioned, it seems to trigger in all of us what our past experiences have been, not only in this life, but encompassing the doctrine of reincarnation and re-embodiment, that we have all probably been all of these different races that we identify today at some time or other in our past soul history. And so it's important that we understand 
and have compassion for one another um, that whatever we're doing in this particular lifetime, it's an assignment and we're learning things and we're overcoming things and transmuting things so that we can have the victory of the ascension, which is what the Lord Jesus Christ came to demonstrate for us. He gave us a pathway and it's a pathway that we can follow step by step, but we will have to go through the initiations and the things that he went through as well. So I'm grateful that we're talking about this topic of the I am race. So most people would instantly just ask, well, what is the I am race? How is that different from other races? And so I think it's important to know that the I am race are really individuals that we tend to call, that the masters call, light bearers. In other words, they're bearing light to the earth and they're going through a series of tests and initiations to demonstrate that light with the ultimate goal being that we too can win the ascension as the Lord Jesus Christ did because he is the way shower for this path. So the I am race then are light bearers, people of light from every nation and every race. And they also tend to be called Americans because in the meta metaphysical sense, the word America is composed of the seven letters that also spell I am race. So rearranging the letters of this word, I am race, spells America. So this is not to put down those of you who may be residing in other nations or born in other nations. It is to simply show that there, was a, there is a plan for each nation as well. And so America's plan has to do with this demonstration of freedom that the masters brought, and they brought it through this avenue of this nation, where they're attempting to bring it through. It's certainly not, it's not a fate accompli just yet, and the nations, each and every one of our nations are experiencing the things that they have to go through because nations themselves also have to follow this spiritual path. And they also have karma, just like individuals do. We yes. have national karma. We have racial karma, individual karma meaning what we put forth, once again, with our free will, what we create individually and collectively is definitely a progression for everyone on the planet. You know, we find that, and I want to talk more about the United States next week, how the United States of America and how its founding and purpose fits into the Ascended Masters plan. So again, Ascended Masters they have reunited with their I am presence. They are beyond the phys physical realm. They're in a very high dimension. And keep in mind that science has discovered two trillion galaxies in our universe, two trillion. Wow. So you can imagine, you know, you know in our, that's our Milky Way, and then there's Andromeda, our neighbor, that's even bigger. So God's great universe that we dwell in is full of beings at all different spiritual realms from the physical on up to the very highest where right. yeah, it's not just it. confined to the people living on our block in our city <laughs> that is right i mean or the, or the people in our place of work it's it's just it's um enormity is is a wonder it's truly a wonder to contemplate it is and that's just our universe that we're talking about two trillion right. galaxies. There's other universes. So God's creation is magnificent. And there are many planets going through their evolutions, some that are in higher vibrations than us, others that are not. And it's very, very interesting what we're all going through at this time. And we know it's at the end of the Piscean age. And we are moving into the Aquarian age, which is that age of, age of freedom, like you were talking about. And therefore, we, we are meeting a little bit of our personal, national, racial type karma. So, Alberta, let's talk about what the masters have said about race, because I think this is extremely important to discuss and talk about, because people are not necessarily looking at it from this broader perspective. Right. Well, I think one of the things that is an easier way for us to kind of take in this grand story is to talk about the group of souls that were referred to in the Bible and in other places as the 12 tribes. 
And of course, this was a coming together of souls who had been together in previous lifetimes and have been together since the, those times of the 12 tribes in lifetimes together now. And so beloved Saint Germain, who is an ascended master, who is a sponsor of this nation of America, has said that many years ago, he called together men and women who had been in his service before in trying to uphold what he referred to as a cosmic honor flame in the heart of America. Now remember that America was a fresh new nation. Um, the nations of Europe and around the world had, had been well known for so many, many, many years and they have fought so many wars and they themselves, those nations, had accumulated quite a lot of heavy karma. But America was like a fresh new beginning, a turning of a new page, a new land the new world, as it was referred to by those who traveled to it. And so when we speak of America throughout, it is this, this concept of being called the I am race. Now those words, I am race, are made up of the same letters of the alphabet as the word America. And I think that's significant. And I think the masters thought it must have been significant too. So originally, I think when you ask about what is race, what the masters have taught is that in the truest sense of the word, there is no such thing as a black race or a white race or a yellow or a red race. So yes, no and, one... You know, let, let me add to that too, Alberta, because I totally agree. And I have talked with different people and in groups and such. You hold up a piece of white paper next to your face and you're not white, and you hope up a yeah. piece of black paper up to your face to, with a black person, and you're not black. You're not yeah. yellow. You're not red. You're none of those colors. We're all part of the human race, and, and it's just sort of this division that is happening right now that is uh, quite serious, actually. Well, I think that one of the things that can help us with that is to understand that all of the races, no matter how we might identify them, have come forth from the heart of God based on these seven rays. And you mentioned that you've already been instructing on these seven rays before. And the seven rays are colors, which you outlined, and they're also paths of initiation. So it might be that in one lifetime, we come to embody on a certain color, a color ray, and all the rays have certain sets of initiations and things that we go through. So we may have fulfilled many rays in many embodiments. We may have come multiple times on the same ray of service. So the so-called right white race um, came, came forth for mastery, for gaining mastery on these seven rays. And the white race um, comes forth for the mastery of like the yellow, the pink, and the white rays or flames. And hence, there are lots of mixtures and tone qualities of their skin. Like you say, if you hold up a white paper next to me, it's not going to make me feel like I'm white. These evolutions, of course, of people were intended to place upon the altar of God the gift of the gaining of self-mastery on that particular ray in that particular lifetime. And so people who come forth in a, a white, what is called a white race skin tone these days, are trying to develop self-mastery in the ways of wisdom and love and purity. These are the qualities of the seven rays, which you probably have already covered. The members of the black race, of what is called the black race, have come forth on the blue and the violet ray. And in the ancient civilizations on the continent of Africa, their skin may actually have had a blue or a violet hue. So these colors are related to the to the rays and the levels of service, and to the concept of alpha and omega, the beginning and the ending. In other words, through going through all of these different rays, different races or whatever, we are beginning to develop the wholeness of the beginning and the ending, the wholeness of alpha and omega. So we can see, for instance, that people of the so-called yellow race and the tradition of the ancient wisdom of China and of the Orient, the people of the land of Qin, they're on this yellow ray of wisdom. And so undoubtedly, we also have had 
an embodiment or more upon that ray. So we've been there. So individual nations, not just people, but also nations, do have their karma, but they also have their calling, their mission, referred to often as dharma. So we find that down through the centuries, mankind has really kind of wandered away from the highest state God intended for us um, since our departure from Eden. And so these pure colors of the rainbow of God are no longer reflected either in our skin tones or in our auras. And a lot of division has set in, and that's an understatement given today's news. All you have to do is listen to the news to, to see how divided we are. And here's the irony of it all. We have probably been embodied in every race. We've been rich, we've been poor. We've been men and we've been women. We've been in all of these different embodiments. And the very people that are supposedly in one race, say the black race, they could have been the people who were embodied in the white race previous and right. vice versa. Absolutely. And so this is the irony and the whole lie that can be perpetuated that we are divided by race. And so this division has set in and it's a pretty stubborn thing. And so these divide and conquer tactics of souls that we might identify um, as fallen ones from ancient days or whatever, instead of the races embracing one another as brother and sister, there is this division. If one race enslaves another race, then the great unity of all children of God and their oneness as children of God is destroyed. So we have to ask this question again, who or what is the I am race? And so one way that the masters have given us to understand it is that it is an evolution of people called light bearers because they still bear light to the earth who have not lost the memory of their God consciousness. So though some of these, meaning some of us, have gone astray on our path of initiation, all of us have retained some level of inner memory of the individualization of the Godhead that, I, that identified was identified to Moses as Jehovah, the God of Israel. So that's one of the bodies of people that many of us already know about, the people that, that Moses led out of Egypt to freedom, out of bondage to freedom. And so this whole concept is one of moving toward the freedom of the soul, the freedom of the individual. And therefore, I think this is a main reason why America was selected as a garden, if you will, for this grand experiment to take place because it was a fresh, newer nation. Yes, there were people who already inhabited this land before the pilgrims or whatever found it. But it was still a new nation where not we didn't have hundreds and hundreds of years of warfare and all of these things going on. And so it was a fresh beginning. And the masters do say that America is a grand experiment. And I right. know when I was studying some of the um, history of the governments on the planet, I really, it really came home to me how America truly is an experiment going from the hierarchy of kings and queens and all the different kinds of uh, ex uh, examples of government we've had that truly having a government of the people by the people and based on freedom is a grand experiment and even our founders said we have a republic if we can keep it and right. it's a very challenging time right now we know that we are at the end of this Piscean cycle where all of karma does come forth. And we do have this uh, opposition battle in between light and darkness. It's, it's been prophesied in the Bible. It's been prophesied by many, many different people and, and spiritual people that are prophesying such a thing. So we can't ignore it. We must come to a realization that if we take a step higher in our consciousness and we understand a broader perspective, then it's not race against race or gender against gender and all of this nonsense of being separated. We must remember that it is in the I am presence 
It is in that part of us that was created in the image and likeness of God, where we are truly one. And that part of us in spirit is there. We're connected. We've always been connected. And the awakening to that connection is so very important. And I've talked about this a lot in previous episodes that you can go back and see. Well, it certainly is a matter of, there is an emphasis today on division and how things are separate and how they are different instead of this emphasis on unison, on our coming together and of our commonalities as the human race. And so um, I know that uh, St. Germain, who is a sponsor to America, he, he has said that it's the intent for the masters is to expand in our consciousness, those who are presently embodied here on planet earth now, to expand in our consciousness that those who are assembled in this entire community of the United States and of the world, the earth, an awareness of the oneness of our life upon this planet, that we would be able to actually create in a new nation, in this, and in this sense it was America, the future of what he referred to as a holy family concept that would in fact draw all of us, draw all mankind together. And therefore he set before us he and other ascended masters who sponsored with their light, they set before us a cup of light in this nation to be able to, to bring forth this concept in, in a country that was as yet untroubled by all of the karmic records of perpetual warfare that so many other nations were bearing. And so that is a part of our St. Germain as a sponsor for us in moving forward with, with this grand experiment in freedom. And, and St. Germain, as I've mentioned in previous episodes, he is the one who introduced in, to the outer consciousness of us evolving on earth, the concept of the violet flame and how that frequency is the freedom flame. And it transmutes energies, meaning memories, karmic records, whatever. So the invocation of the violet flame of freedom is very critical to our time, our cycle that we're going through right now. It is, and it's, um, it's so important for us to recognize the spiritual aspects of all of these things, the spiritual a aspects of the nations that we live in, and what may have been intended for them, and are we the people that God has sent because of our previous experiences in lifetimes past may have what it takes to help pull this unity that is needed on upon the entire planetary body together. And so it is our, it's, I mean, it's an amazing thing if you think about the computers of the mind of God to keep all of this straight and to be able to bring forth the people who might have solutions for the present day and age. So when we ask this question, who or what is the I am race? Well, it's really an evolution of peoples, light barriers we will call them, who have not lost fully the memory of their God consciousness and of their training in previous embodiments. And so some of these have gone astray under all the initiations that we've been put through. Still, we have a memory of it and we can keep pulling back and retain some of that inner, inner memory of the individualization of the Godhead and this was identified to Moses, who led that huge mass of people out of Egypt. And the memory of the Godhead was, it was identified to Moses as Jehovah, the God of Israel, the self-proclaimed, I am who I am. And so this is a phrase that is important to us. I am who I am. I am that I am. And the words I am, of course, pull up the memory of the meaning God in me is. So this is a phrase that we all use a lot in our lives. I am this, I am that, I am the other thing. But if we have this little sense inside of ourselves, whenever we do say that phrase, I am, that we're really saying God in me is. Yes, and that that's change? important. So important. Yeah. How would that change how you speak and how you work? If you just use the, th the thought, whenever I'm saying I am, and then whatever follows it, you're really saying God in me is that thing. So it's a, 
it's a simpler little way of having our own little personal reminder. You can just put those little two words up on your bathroom mirror or on the refrigerator, just I am with a dash after it. God in me is what? What do you want God in you to be on any given day or in any given relationship or in any given conversation? And so it's a choice. It's a personal choice. And it's just linked to those words, I am, which means God in me is. And then whatever you put to follow it is what you're declaring, what you're putting forth for your life. And so it's an important aspect to think about the I am race. It's the God in me is what race? What do we want this race to be that is godlike? Yeah, it's a race of light. Yes. And that's anyone who espouses the light and reaches to that level of consciousness. And understanding, again, as you said, the I am words, once, whatever you put after that, you're literally asking God in you to declare that into the physical dimension. Right. And right. that's what's so important because on the path of spirituality, are heading back to God in that reunion permanently so we don't incarnate anymore, we have choices to make. And one of the things that is sometimes hard for people to accept is we are responsible for our actions and everything we say, do, think. I mean, it's, it's in the scriptures. Jesus said it. it. It's also the law of cause and effect. What you reap, you sow. Every action, there's an opposite equal reaction. So it's very important to understand how we got to the situation that we're in. And um, we just need to make the correct choices of the correct use of God's energy from our I am presence that flows to us continually. That's what keeps us alive. Well, and that's why it's important for us to be humble about this because um, at some level, we identify with the majesty of our God, and we know that God desires to raise us into the victory of our personal ascensions. And we have to see ourselves actually being able to do that. So in one sense, it does not matter what body we wear. Our body is like a uniform. We come to deal with certain souls that are a part of us, and we are a part of them. We've been together in other certain circumstances where we may have passed initiations together or we may have failed initiations. Well, and that's, that's so true. And just as a quick reminder, again, Alberta outlined what the different races, which frequency of energy from God's qualities and, and frequency of energy are colors, basically a manifest in colors. And it's important to know that we all come out of the white light of purity of Almighty God. That is at the base of each color in these seven rays. And, and of course, these are the seven basic rays, seven basic chakras. There are more uh, colors, frequencies, and such. But the violet fire, the violet flame, is definitely an important component to what we're experiencing now. So I am going to post with this recording also the recording on the mantra of the violet flame using the mantra i am a being of violet fire i am the purity god desires and you can decree along with that and it's it's really important to understand that there are many tools which i've covered in previous podcasts that you can review spiritual tools that help us on the spiritual path, that help us through some difficult and challenging times that we may be uh, focusing or we may be experiencing at this time. Well, and those, um, those mantras and prayers and things that we can give on the different rays and especially on this violet ray, as you have said, are a part of our calling. I mean, we're calling on our higher selves um, to give us a quotient of energy that, that really is sufficient to completely resolve this issue of race, when race never should have been an issue ever upon the earth to begin with. But when we remember that we have all been here before, and we are here again now, and each lifetime is a series of tests and initiations, so we have all been all of these races. We have all had this experience, and so sometimes we bring forward 
memories of experiences that are not exactly happy memories. And it does cause us to behave in certain ways until we can get hold of this understanding of who we really are, who we have been, where we have been. And so it doesn't really matter what body we wear because our body is just like a uniform and it becomes a part of us and we self-identify with it. And our consciousness in this dimension, of course, is very limited compared to our God consciousness. We exist in many levels and different vibrations simultaneously. We're just not necessarily awakened to all of those different levels and vibrations. Right. Right. So very, very good. Alberta, is there, are there any final words of wisdom or any particular point you'd like to leave with our listeners today? Yes, I think that today we accept, we need to strive to accept that we are of a, keep, a keeper of a certain flame, a certain vibration of energy that we know can be helpful to us, to our families, to our nation, and to the planetary body. And so we want to know that no matter where we were born or where we reside now, we want to renew this vision and this mandate, really, that the victory, not only of our uh, individual souls, but that the victory of our nations and that the victory of America as a forerunner in this fight for freedom is actually a planetary assignment. And that's how I like to think of it, is it's really a cosmic mission for all of the I am race. And so this idea of identifying with the I am race, which is all peoples, is one to hold on to and to keep holding this sense of unity and unison and to be able to convey it through our words, through our actions, through our deeds, through how we interact with other people and how we serve other people, holding that particular vision of it's a planetary assignment for all of the I am race puts us all in the same boat together because we are anyway. We're all here on planet earth right now and we're facing these tests and initiations. So let's do it together and let's have a sense of claiming I am one with others and I am one with my God. And so that's my, my final hope and prayer for all of us. Well, thank you so much for that. And everybody, I am looking forward next week to our episode to talk about, again, the United States of America and how its founding and purpose fits into the Ascended Master Plan. I think you'll find it very interesting. It'll give you a perspective you may have ever thought of. And once again, when we all raise to this level of the I am presence, it is in that part of God, the I am, where we are one, truly. And so we really need to um, accept and evolve to that higher level of consciousness to bring a golden age on this planet, which the Aquarian age is meant to be. So we are going through challenging times. There are challenges that we're facing. The people of light must really stand up and stand for the light. We know that is an important time for the light to consume, swallow up the darkness. So thank you again, Alberta, for being with us. Truly appreciate it. Oh, I'm so grateful to be here, to be with you, Nancy, and with all of your listeners. Thank you for the opportunity. You are most welcome. So everybody, I will see you and we will see you next week. Until then, keep an open mind, a generous heart, and a powerful spirit. Thank you for being with me today. And if you enjoyed this episode, Please subscribe, download, and comment. I'd love to hear from you, and your support is much appreciated. And don't forget, go to nancyshowalter.com to get your free electronic copy of my book, It's Okay to Be Rich, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Increased Wealth and Personal Mastery, endorsed by T. Harv Ecker. And my free mini course, How to Speak Your Success, The Shocking Truth of How Your Words Impact Achieving Your Goals. I'll see you next week.